my preview and predictions for Open Pro Bodybuilding at the 2023 Tampa Pro Plus results and HD footage from the 212 Classic Physique plus much more. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back for another bodybuilding news video doing my preview top six predictions from sixth all the way up to first for the 2023 Tampa Pro. And in sixth place, I have Lewis Breed. The guy looks like he comes in condition. He looks like he packs a lot of muscle, maybe not as shapely as a few of the other guys, but still not too bad. So sixth place might be a little bit harsh for Lewis Breed. I definitely think he can place maybe as high as a third possibly at, uh, I'd say, the peak of this contest. But it looks like he's bringing it to this contest and looking forward to seeing what he looks like on stage next to these other guys. In fifth place, I have Brady King. Brady looks like he's bringing a really small waist, a great front double bicep. Looks like he has some really strong shots and a really great structure. It's just going to depend if he's going to have the level of muscularity and conditioning to beat Lewis Breed. But based on these updates and photos that I'm seeing, you know, one, two, three days out of this contest, looks like he's going to be pretty damn good in this one. In fourth place, I have Nate Spear. Nate in his pre-contest photos never looks as impressive as he actually is on stage when he stands next to other people. Once he stands next to other people, he always looks in better condition and way, way bigger than he actually looks in these pre-contest updates. He's held on to his condition. This is his last show of the season, and I think he's going to bring it once again. Although these updates don't look like he's in as good condition as he probably is in, but I believe he lives actually pretty close to where this contest is taking place. He wants to stand in front of Steve uh, Weinberger and Tyler Mannion, and uh, hopefully in this contest, he impresses once again as he is really impressed this year on stage. In third place, I have Joel Thomas, who looks like the last couple of years, he's really bringing his conditioning to the stage. You can see here in these recent pre-contest updates, the umbilical hernia, which is the um, belly button hernia there, you can see in the photo, may be a little bit of an issue for him where maybe a Nate Spear or someone else could get over him but he is very, very conditioned here. He brings a lot of muscle to the stage. Maybe shoulder structure-wise, he isn't quite as wide as a Nate, where Nate could maybe expose him a little bit, but his conditioning looks really, really good. And this actual video here was actually posted four weeks ago where he's bringing a lot of thick, dense muscle to the stage. So it'll be interesting to see how he looks against like a John Del Rosa, who I actually have in second place here. And John really did impress me in his comeback to the stage. Looked really, really good two weeks ago in Chicago. He's probably the most complete bodybuilder on stage out of anyone that was up there. But he just, I think, was maybe slightly outconditioned by Justin Shire. Maybe slightly um, out shaped, maybe you'd say, in some ways. With Justin's freakiness, with his tiny, tiny waist and just how he opened up in his rib cage and into that front double bicep. But John looked really, really good. There's people making a case that he could have actually won that contest and I could definitely make the case for it as well. I think John could have been a tiny bit sharper. He did have a bit of a nightmare, I think, with traveling and things like that as well. But hopefully with a smoother traveling schedule this time around and maybe just that little bit more conditioning bringing to the stage, he could look potentially close to his all-time best at this one. And in first place, no surprises here, I have Hunter Labrada. And you can see here posted up by Brett Wilkin on his story, Hunter's looking damn good in the filling out process. I will say one thing though, he maybe isn't quite as crisp as some actual pre-contest photos, but overall, I'd say the conditioning looks pretty damn good and probably better than ever. It just seems like when Hunter carbs up, sometimes he has a propensity to hold just a little bit of fluid. These are photos, I believe, from the day prior, two days out, where he looks absolutely inside out and way more filled out as well than we saw, you know, four days out, 10 days out, especially 10 days out. That's when I was noticing Hunter was probably at his all-time flattest in terms of the updates we saw. So really excited, looking forward to seeing Hunter Labrada on stage, and uh, I have him taking out this contest. But let me know your predictions in the comments below. Who do you have winning this contest? Give me your top three, your top five. Let me know your thoughts. Now, I'm going to get to some of the results here. Now, Fred Biggie Smalls, this guy is 60 years of age. He wins the Masters. He's actually jumping in the Open as well. And in three weeks, he'll be on stage at that Masters Olympia, where if he can sharpen up that little bit more, like the bubbly muscle and the round muscle is crazy at 60 years old. And he poses 
just about better than anyone. So I'm looking forward to seeing his posing routine tomorrow, well, later on today, whichever uh, location you are in the world. So very, very excited for that. But shout out to Fred Biggie Smalls because he actually competed in the over 40s. He didn't even go the over 60s in the master. So shout out to Fred Biggie Smalls. I'll quickly get to all these other results as well. We've got some HD footage and I will get to the 212 and the classic physique as many of you guys I'm sure are interested in. First place in the figure, we had Quarren Pachetto. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. She had an incredible physique, very, very small waist, jacked quads, looked awesome from the back, very low lats uh, insertions and just looked really, really good. Head to toe looked fantastic, great presentation. In the women's physique, we had Janine Feldman. She looked incredible. Actually beat out a top five women's physique Olympian in Ivy Rain, who's actually competing in three weeks in that Masters Olympia and goes in as the favorite. Now, I don't believe Janine is in that Masters Olympia, but I'll have to actually check that myself as well because I don't know how old Janine is. I actually tried to search her up on IG, but she looks insane. Her front double bicep, just absolutely crazy, complete from every angle and... Uh, I imagine she's going to be right up there, maybe pushing for a top five at the Olympia this year after qualifying. In the men's physique, we had Ara Safai. He looks awesome. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his last name correctly, but I've seen this guy in many contests throughout the years, and he just gets better and better. Very, very balanced, tight waist, very, very hard conditioned, and a lot of muscularity as well. So shout out to him because he looked fantastic as always. In the 212, we had Fabricio de Souza Morea. Now, he was very thickly muscled, head to toe, front to back, really missing nothing. Looked really, really good. Maybe not quite as crisp in his actual back compared to every other angle, but very, very impressed. Conditioning was very good overall and packed a lot of muscle. And I'm very intrigued to see where he fits in at the Mr. Olympia in the 212s. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is this guy a top five guy? Is he a top 10 guy? top 15. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below. And in the classic physique, we had a top two pose down and comparison between Matthew Grego on the left and Carlos Domar on the right. And I believe these guys actually competed against each other a few weeks back where Carlos got the nod. This time around, Matthew Grego on the left takes this one out, looked fantastic. And I think where the difference was, because in terms of posing, maybe Carlos was slightly more polished, slightly better, maybe has a slightly more classic physique, but Matthew was cut from stone and just brought a level of muscle density to the stage, which I think the judges liked. And that's why they put Matthew Grego over Carlos Domar. And both guys honestly looked fantastic. And even, you know, you look at the top six, they all looked great. And in third place, we had Robert Waterhouse, who actually got third, I believe it was at Vancouver as well, where people debated that he could have even won the show. Now, I haven't seen enough comparisons of the top five or top six together, but he looked like, again, that he could have potentially won the show because he looked absolutely fantastic. Brings a classic physique to the stage and was cut from stone as many of these guys were. I am just so impressed with the classic physique and what these guys are bringing to the stage. And maybe that weight increase as well actually helped Matthew Grego in this contest because he looks like he's really filling out that weight cap as well. I'm not sure if that's the case, but he looked like he had just that little bit more weight and muscularity than Carlos Doma, which may have been the difference for him. So anyway, guys, I will be going live for the pre-judging and the finals very, very soon for that 2023 Tampa Pro for the Men's Open Bodybuilding. And uh, I'll be showing you guys the last minute updates, talking about it, all that good stuff. So make sure you do subscribe, hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of when I go live for both the pre-judging and the finals and uh, stay tuned to Desktop Bodybuilding. So that's it for myself. I'm Xavier Wills. This is Desktop Bodybuilding and we are out. <laughs>